Brandon Nimmo was the only free agent the Mets had from their 2022 roster when it comes to their position players. Now that he's resigned, the Mets are essentially returning the same team. But they definitely need to add some more power into the lineup. Where could that power come from next season? I will discuss that on today's edition of Locked On Mets. You are Locked On Mets, your daily New York Mets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello to all you amazing Mets fans. You're watching Locked On Mets. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Ryan Ficklestein. If you want to find any of my work, follow me on Twitter at FicklesteinRyan. You can also find some of my writing at JustBaseball.com, where I work as the managing editor. Now, if you look at the Mets lineup right now, a lot of it looks similar to what it was last season because the Mets are bringing back the same team. Outfield has not changed. Mark Canna in left, Brandon Nimmo in center, Starling Marte in right. Infield has not changed. Pete Alonso at first, Jeff McNeil at second, Francisco Lindor at short, Eduardo Escobar at third, although we kind of project that Brett Beatty will eventually take that job this season. Catcher, Alvarez is the big upside play, but you still have Tomas Nito and James McCann. So how do the Mets get better? Well, first of all, the question is, do they have to get better? The New York Mets scored 772 runs last season. That was the fifth most in all of baseball, tied with the St. Louis Cardinals. WRC Plus is way to runs created plus, an all-encompassing metric that measures hitters based on a league average of 100. When it comes to Team WRC Plus, the Mets had a 116 mark, which was the third best in baseball. When it comes to batting average and on-base percentage, they had the second best mark in both of those departments. And when it comes to position player F4, they had the fourth best mark among all teams in baseball. The Mets were also one of the few teams that if you look up and down their starting lineup, they had seven guys that were well above average hitters. That was basically everyone in the starting lineup, excluding the catcher position and Eduardo Escobar at third. All the other hitters, including Mark Canna, graded out very highly on WRC+. And that's because they got on base at a good clip. They passed the, the baton. It was a beautiful lineup to watch most days. Yet there was also times where they were missing something. And you look at the home runs hit, 171 by the Mets in 2022, 15th most in baseball. Their isolated power of 153, also 15th most. The Atlanta Braves won the division. Now they had the same exact record, but they won the division. They hit 243 home runs last season. A completely different approach than the Mets. They did not do as good of a job hitting with runners in scoring position, passing the baton, all that stuff. But they just hit the ball out of the yard. So their isolated power of 190 was the best mark among any team in baseball. They hit the second most home runs. The only team that hit more homers was Aaron Judge. Oh, sorry, the New York Yankees. Uh, With that said, how do you get more home runs in the lineup if you're the Mets? If you want to just get to at least 200, but let's say 220. All right, The Mets hit 220 home runs with the hitters that they have that are going to give you quality at bats. There's a chance this could end up being the best lineup of baseball, or at least, again, a top five, if not even a little bit higher, maybe top three this year. So let's just count home runs on projections. This past season, Pete Alonso at 40. You had Lindor had 26. Escobar had 20. You got 16 apiece from Brandon Nemo and Sterling Marte, 13 from Mark Canna, 9 from Jeff McNeil. Now, if you were to take those numbers and try to project them out and replicate it for next season, Let's say 70 home runs between Pete Alonso and Francisco Lindor. So that is a little more than they got. They got 66 this year. That's saying that maybe Alonso gives you a couple more. Maybe Lindor does. 25 from Eduardo Escobar slash Brett Beatty from that third base position. Here's the thing. If you're trying to add power to the lineup, you could say third base in the area you can do it. I think that for one, if we're discussing power, Escobar was the third best power hitter on the Mets next season and packs more punch in his bat than most hitters in the lineup. Brett Beatty brings some pop to the equation too. I don't see them in on a Justin Turner. 
I don't think that Brandon Drury does much for you at third base. I mean, he could be a nice fit as far as being a super utility guy that would maybe be, you know, a high key role player, but I don't think that that's really where they should be focusing. Now, let's just say you get the home runs from third base, like I mentioned, from shortstop from first base. Let's say you get 30 total between Marte and Nemo, so it's 15 apiece, or you know maybe one of them has a better home run season than the other. 20 from Canna and McNeil. They had 22 last season. I think that's realistic. If your top seven with Escobar and Beatty kind of combining end up with 145 home runs, where do you find those additional 75 homers to get you to 220? Last year, the Mets got 31 home runs outside of their top seven. Um, or I guess top eight, including Escobar into that mix. Now, could you project 30 home runs from a group of the backup catchers and, you know, the guys that come up and Daniel Vogelback and all that? I mean, you know, there, there's, there's still room for that. But the bottom line really, I, I think is how do you get 75 home runs from everyone, all those guys, the catching position, the DH spot. DH is where you have to add here. And I think that the easiest way to really do this or the best way to build out this roster is to find a fourth outfielder that is on Mark Canna's level or could outperform Mark Canna in a given season where you can get some power into Canna's spot in that lineup and push him from some playing time into more of that fourth outfielder role. Canna can be your backup first baseman. That outfielder can, you know, take some time from Canna, take some time from Nemo, some Mar- from Marte. If you could find someone that can mix those at bats around, I think that is where you can get some more power. And you're definitely going to get more power from Francisco Alvarez out of that catcher spot. So if you can get 20 home runs from Francisco Alvarez, right? And then let's just say you get 10 from the collection of your other backup catchers and just random guys coming up. You know, at that point, where are you getting 45 home runs from? How are you adding that to the lineup? I think a Daniel Vogelback can maybe get you 15, maybe 20. Where are you getting that 25 to 30 home runs? And that's where we kind of look here. Which guy can the Mets sign that can get them over the top in the power department? That could hit 30 home runs on a given season, or at least get you closer. We're going to go through some names in just a minute. First, though, today's episode is brought to you by BetOnline. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there from football to basketball to soccer and esports. They've got it all at BetOnline.net. If you love sports podcasts, you can find those at BetOnline as well. BetOnline is always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. Uh, right now, the Mets are plus 900 to win the World Series. If you want to bet on that, head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action. Bet online where the game starts. How can the New York Mets get more power into the lineup? Now, I think there's a couple of ways that you can operate here. One is keeping Daniel Vogel back and finding a player that will complement him, and that's what we're going to start with here. There's one guy that to me makes more sense than any other free agent out there that you can plug in right now who can take that Darren Ruff spot. You can hopefully find a suitor for Ruff, send him out. Maybe you can find a suitor for James McCann, send him out. Whether that means eating $20 million or that $24 million contract or not, you can get him off your books, get him out of the way. You can plug one last guy into this team and it makes complete sense to me. And that name is Adam Duvall. Adam Duvall is really the top free agent I'd be looking at right now that just makes sense for this team. Because he could be the right-handed complement to Daniel Vogelback. He can play center field. He can play left. He can play right. So let's just say, unfortunately, Stalin Marte gets hit in the hand again. And you lose him for six weeks because it happened in the middle of the season. Well... You can pluck Adam Duvall into right field. He'll give you some pop. He'll give you some strong defense. Let's just say Nimmo goes down. You can plug Adam Duvall into center. 
and you can roll for a little bit. Same thing with left field. You can play Adam Duvall at first base if you had to. You can do a lot with Adam Duvall, or you can even put you know Can at first base, probably be the way they go, and have Duvall. I think Duvall's a better defender out in the outfield. Adam Duvall has hit 30 home runs three times in his career, and as recently as 2021, he hit 38 homers. He led the league in RBIs with 113. This was playing for primarily the Braves, well, really entirely in the NL East, playing with the Marlins for 91 games, the Braves for 55. Um, He was really solid. And, you know, I I think overall you look at the career, he's a 230 hitter, 289 on base, but 465 slugging. So, no, he's not going to get on base at a great clip. No, he's not going to pass the baton. But you know what? He can ambush pitchers and he can find a way to contribute in that manner. And also, against lefties this past season, he did hit six bombs. He had a WRC plus of, I believe it was 129. Yeah, 129, 562 slug uh, with a 329 ISO. That's isolated power against lefties. So if he can mash lefties, he becomes that complement to Vogelback, but he also serves the fourth outfielder role. I think that is, if you're going to continue to feature Vogelback, that's how you get around his lack of you know positional flexibility. He's a DH only. You find someone that can serve multiple roles. With Adam Duvall and Jeff McNeil, I think the Mets would have coverage all over the place. Really, Adam Duvall and Louis Guillorme both kind of cover the outfield and the infield, and then you can decide when you have to deploy Jeff McNeil in the outfield or how much you can keep him at second base. You just have a lot of options. Now, kind of a light version of Adam Duvall is A.J. Pollock. Now, A.J. Pollock has had a much better career than Adam Duvall um, and also has two recent seasons that are better than Adam Duvall because you look at what he did in 2020 and 2021, and Pollock was posting WRC pluses of 130, which, looking at Duvall, he's never done that in his career. Closest he got was 120 in 2019 uh, in a season where you know, he only played 30 games. So that's not even really a great sample size to understand it. You, know, you look at what A.J. Pollock did in 2021 with the Dodgers. He hit 297, a 355 on base, a 536 slugging, 137 WRC+. Plus. He had 21 bombs. His isolated power was 240. Year before that, 2020, his isolated power was 291. That's insane. Slugging percentage 566. He had 16 home runs in 55 games that season. That's absurd. Um, yeah, you know, AJ Pollock, he's 35. He had a horrible year this year. So I just gave you all the good stuff. The bad is he's coming off a season where he had 245, 292 on base, 389 slug. 92 WRC plus. He did hit 14 home runs in 138 games, so that's solid. You know, he really has been, you know, at least if you go back to 2015, like 15 to 20 home runs, you can kind of bank on AJ Pollock for that. As a fourth outfielder who maybe is looking to win a ring, I think that that makes a lot of sense. Although I guess he technically won one, right, with the Dodgers in 2020. Uh, but He had a rough year playing with the White Sox. I think a lot of people had rough years out there. Uh, Get him to a competitive environment where he's trying to to earn at-bats, and I think that's just going to bring the most out of guys like Pollock, Canna, um, you know, and others even at the DH spot. Because if A.J. Pollock is right, I mean, he could theoretically supplant a Canna. I think that's kind of where you're at with all the guys that I'm mentioning today. It's it's players that in the right season could be better than a Mark Canna, but – have never really had to play a fourth outfielder role and now can slot into that mix and it makes sense. Although the next two guys, I think one of them, you'd almost have to clear Vogel back to make it make sense for him to sign with the Mets. And the other, I would imagine it'd be something similar. I, I don't know if he'd be willing to serve the role that I envisioned for him, but if he would, He does make a lot of sense because he feels exactly what you're looking for. Good defense, a lot of pop. We'll get to those last two names in a minute. But first, another word from our sponsors. All right, so our last two guys listed here to add some pop to the New York Mets lineup, Michael Conforto, Joey Gallo. 
I don't know which one Mets fans would hate more because I think that I can already envision people screaming in the comment section about how much they'd hate either of these signings. But let me ease your mind a little bit. For one, Michael Conforto. Not to continue to beat a dead horse, as I probably am at this juncture, but in his worst season, 2021, although I guess 2016 was the worst one, but the worst season since he really did establish himself as a full-time big leader in 2017. He still had a 106 WRC+. plus. He still got on base at a 344 clip. The slug was gone. He, he did not hit for power that year, but he still had 14 homers. Now, I don't think he's signing up to be your fourth outfielder. But if you, you tell him that you can supplant a Vogelback or a Canna in the starting lineup, if you give him a contract that is incentivized, the Mets could outspend the market on a one-year guarantee for Conforto and be like, look, we want you back. We'd love for you to be a part of winning with us here. You know, if it's a one-year deal, let's just say it is like a one-year $10 million with a second-year option at twenty with a $5 million buyout, and there's incentives baked in on the first year. So if you're Michael Conforto, and maybe even make it as much as plate appearance incentives, I mean, that could be something that you do. So look, you give them all of um, the, you know, for lack of, you know, a repetitive word, their incentives, to sign with the Mets and earn playing time. And... If you did give him that type of contract, he's still guaranteed $15 million, So that's right around what Bellinger got as a guy who's trying to reclaim his value with that agent of Scott Boris. The second year option um, at $20 million would be a club option. So again, if he's not good, you want him off the books, you buy him out. For Conforto's sake, he could know he has all security that if he goes out, has a, a decent year. He could come back at 20. Um, and you could even make that a mutual option. So, you know, if, if he goes out and he performs and the Mets decide, yeah, we want you at 20, and he says, I think I can get that over a longer-term deal, well, then you can go elsewhere. I think Conforto would make sense, and he would be the best possible fit because you know he can play in New York. I think that he could eventually take Cannon's job out in left field. Defensively, I think he's better than Mark Canna. Put him in left. I think he'd actually be really strong out there, assuming the shoulder's good. He brings the pop to the lineup. And, you know, now all of a sudden Mark Canna becomes your fourth outfielder. And I love that. Now, I don't know if that's the best thing for Conforto. I think he might want to go somewhere where there's more playing time. Same conversation could be had with Joey Gallo. Now, I know, again, you're thinking, like, what are we doing with Joey Gallo? He was just awful with the Yankees. Well, he went over to the Dodgers, and he was certainly better. Not great, but certainly better. Uh, but how many years across their careers would you say that you'd prefer Daniel Vogel back on your team than Joey Gallo? The guy's hit 177 career home runs. He has multiple 40 home run seasons. He had 38, 38 home runs a year ago. And in 2019, he hit 22 home runs in 70 games. So on pace for over 40. For his career, his slugging percentage is 469. Now, this season, it was a lost year for him. But again, we're a year removed from Joey Gallo in 2021 playing 153 games, hitting 199 because he struggled ever since he went to the Yankees. 351 on base, 458 slugging. But what he did in Texas, 95 games prior to getting traded to the Yankees, was 223 hitter, 379 on base, 490 slugging. 25 home runs in 95 games, 138 WRC+. plus. Joey Gallo would be an excellent defensive right fielder. I think that whether it is, you know, if Nemo needs a blow, putting Gallo in center, or if it's putting Cannon in center and putting Gallo in left, I think your defense would hold up, and he gives you the slug you're looking for. I still think that if you're keeping Daniel Vogel back, Conforto and Gallo don't make as much sense. But if you move on from Vogelback, 
or if you see what these guys, either of them, look, if you bring them in and then see what they look like in spring training and then move on from Vogelback. And you have a roster to, let's just say, instead of Daniel Vogelback and Darren Ruff, it's Michael Conforto and Mark Vientos or Joey Gallo and Mark Vientos. I think that makes a lot of sense. Now, if you're sticking with Vogelback, which is what tomorrow's podcast is going to be on, how do you complement him best? I think you go back to the two names I mentioned earlier that sort of fill both of those needs of fourth outfielder and right-handed complement at DH, and that is Adam Duvall and A.J. Pollock. I think those are four free agents that are realistic, that would sign one-year deals, that would complete the Mets roster and serve multiple functions. The other thing that you could do, though, is if you are to move on from Vogelback and keep that DH spot more open, well, now there's a world of possibilities that maybe expand beyond some of the names that I just mentioned. Um, And we'll get to those tomorrow. Or for me personally, as I am recording these shows ahead of my vacation, in about 15 minutes as I am (laughs) knocking out all these shows. As always, though, Thank you for listening. Make sure you follow, rate, and review wherever you get your podcast. Make sure you follow me on Twitter, at Ficklestein Ryan. Follow the show at Locked On Mets. Thank you for making Locked On Mets your first listen every day. Now, for your second listen, check out Locked On Sports Today, hosted by Peter Bukowski. Locked On Sports Today is where you should go to stay up today with everything going on around the sports world. You can follow Locked On Sports Today on the Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get podcasts.